Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at how to answer a Elizabeth or a Germany question number five for the new updated EDUCAST and WJEC history exam board. So now we're going to look at how we would approach a Germany or Elizabeth question five. As we know, it's worth 16 marks with some spag marks allocated as well. And that means we will get a total of 16 minutes to work on this question using a total of five paragraphs. We'll be provided with an interpretation. Usually this is by a historian, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. And we'll be asked to what extent we agree with the interpretation above. We'll need to make a judgment. We can either fully agree, partially agree, or disagree with the interpretation, and we'll have to provide some evidence as to why we've made this judgment. If we look over to the right of the screen, we can see our five paragraph structure and the task that we need to do within each paragraph. So our very first paragraph, we have to make that initial judgment. I fully agree, I partially agree, or I disagree. We then need to provide the reasons why we made that judgment in the first place, and we'll do so by listing our three other interpretations the other three things that other historians may suggest. Our second paragraph is context. We have to make sure we make it clear we understand what was going on at the time in question. And the context that we provide should link back to the interpretation that's already been provided. Aim to have about four or five sentences of context and making sure we're hitting that magic number of three key points. Our third paragraph is one that we've been working on quite a bit lately, and this is to discuss authorship. We must discuss who said the interpretation, what was said in the interpretation, and why this individual made that claim. At the end, based on what we know, we have to make a statement if it all adds up and makes sense. The fourth paragraph is arguably one of the most important. If we don't talk about other interpretations, we'll be stuck in band one. So we must provide three other interpretations that another historian may suggest. You're welcome to use sentence starters such as another historian may say, another historian may suggest, another view of a historian could be. And you should provide three key points alongside each of your interpretations. And lastly, paragraph five, make your final judgment. This must be written in the same way as your initial judgment was. Remind the reader of your judgment and provide your three other interpretations. So here we have our sample question that we'll work on together. And this is a Elizabeth question five. So it says, read the interpretation below and answer the question which follows. Elizabethan England was ravaged by social issue, the worst being poverty. Vagrants and vagabonds were among the worst and most problematic issues that Elizabeth was to face. Now, this was written by Tim Sanderson. He's a historian writing in his book called Elizabeth in Europe, written in 1999. How far do you agree with this interpretation that poverty was the most serious issue during Elizabeth's reign? Now, when we're looking at this question, we need to first of all do our translations because there may be some words like ravaged, social issue, vagrants and vagabonds that we want to expand upon to show the examiner we have strong knowledge. We also have to identify the importance of Tim Sanderson being a historian, writing in a book, and the fact that this is written in 1999. Now when we're looking at our question we should always use our bug method, which means that we should box our command word. How far do we agree? And we should make sure we underline the key feature of the question and that's poverty is the most serious issue during Elizabeth's reign. We glance back at 16, so we know how many minutes are remaining. And we should always look at the italicized text as well. And this will tell us that we should refer to how and why other interpretations of the issue differ. It says we should use our own knowledge to make sure we reach a well-supported judgment. Right, so now that we've made our quick notes we've kind of underlined. Uh, what we're going to do is actually go through this together and make any notes that we would want to help us prepare for the question itself. So words like ravaged and social issue, we might want to substitute for words we're more familiar with. And then we'll need to consider what are we going to do for our quick notes. So what are the potential problems 
that Elizabeth was facing. Uh, what was the issue of poverty, vagrants and vagabonds? What do we know about them? The fact that he's a historian, the fact it's written in a book called Elizabeth in Europe, and the fact it's written in 1999. So in terms of problems, these are some of the other issues, not all of them, but some of the other issues that Elizabeth was facing at the time. There were nine causes of poverty, four of them are listed, the other five can be found in your notes. Vagrants and vagabonds, we know about impotent versus able-bodied poor, a vagrant would travel around and spread news, it's a good thing, they would also spread disease, that's a bad thing. We also know that Tim Sanderson is a historian, so he's skilled in research. It's written in a book, which would have its facts often checked. And the fact that it's written in 1999 could be a benefit for us, in the sense that we know the author would have time to research, but also have a more holistic view of all the problems caused in the Elizabethan era, and he'd be able to make a better decision about his own interpretation. I partially agree with the interpretation that poverty, vagrants and vagabonds were the worst issue faced by Elizabeth during her reign. Poverty did pose significant problems, and Elizabeth was the first monarch to attempt to help the poor through her poor laws. Unlike Henry, Edward and Mary punished them instead. However, there were other issues faced by Elizabeth that were perhaps more problematic, such as the religious settlement of 1559, the Catholic threat and Parliament. At the time, Elizabethan England was suffering from high rates of poverty. Many farmers changed from growing crops to raising livestock and no longer needed as many workers. This meant that people left the countryside and moved to towns in search of work. Upon arrival, the demand for housing increased and led to rack renting, a steep rise in housing prices. All the while, much of the country could not agree on religion, and Elizabeth's new church was not favored by all. Many Catholics chose to avoid church services and were fined as recusants. Elizabeth knew she had to solve these problems quickly by creating laws to help those living in poverty, and force everyone to obey her religious rules. The interpretation is by Tim Sanderson, an historian writing in his book called Elizabeth and Europe in 1999. As an historian, Sanderson would possess skills in research and have knowledge about the Elizabethan era. The book is about Elizabeth and Europe so it would probably contain information about other problems which affected the Queen and Spain which links to the Catholic threat. Since the book was published in 1999, Sanderson has had plenty of time to collect information to make his judgment, and has a clear view of all the problems Elizabeth faced. Sanderson certainly presents valid information in his interpretation as poverty was in fact an issue. However I would like to know if he specializes in a specific area of history as this may have influenced his interpretation, causing him to leave out other problems faced by the Queen. Other historians may suggest that there were other problems greater to Elizabeth than poverty. An historian may say that the religious settlement of 1559 was Elizabeth's greatest problem, as via media failed and Elizabeth's new church was constantly under threat. Even until the end of her reign in 1603, Elizabeth never fully solved the problem of religion in England. Another historian may claim that the Catholic threat was Elizabeth's biggest problem, as the Ridolfi, Throckmorton, Barbington plots and rebellion of the Northern Earls all aimed to assassinate Elizabeth and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. Another view is that Parliament was Elizabeth's greatest problem because towards the end of Elizabeth's reign, MPs were challenging the Queen's authority by discussing her succession, marriage and religious settlement. The threat was so great that Elizabeth went as far as imprisoning Anthony Cope and Peter Wentworth for discussing these issues in Parliament. I partially agree with the interpretation that poverty was the greatest problem faced by Elizabeth. Sanderson is correct to state that poverty was an issue and remained so until the passing of the 1601 Poor Laws. However, Sanderson does not comment on other, perhaps more serious issues such as the religious settlement of 1559, the Catholic threat and Parliament. All of these issues caused great trouble for Elizabeth, and led to religious division, plots to murder the Queen and plenty of opposition within her kingdom. 
So now that you've had a look at a model answer for the previous question, there are three questions appearing on the screen for you now to try. The first two are from the Elizabeth papers, and the last one is from a Germany paper. If you want to go ahead and pause the video now, you can write down the question that you would like to do, and we'll have model answers appearing in a few moments. So here are some sample answers for the previous questions. Each of them will appear on screen for 10 seconds. I know that's not enough time for you to read them in their entirety, but you can pause the video and then you'll be able to read those through uh, as a sample to use to improve your own work. A mark scheme will also appear at the very end. 